In this video, we're going to use Google Apps Script to convert a sheet that is an invoice template into a PDF and save it to a folder of our choosing on our Google Drive. And not only that, what we want to do is be able to loop through a list of clients that feeds into our invoice template and as it goes through each iteration of the loop, save each of these invoices to that folder with the file names being the client and the invoice number. So you can see here, I have an invoice template on this first tab called invoice. On the second tab, I have a list of clients with all of the details that feed into formulas on this invoice template. And what we want to do is loop through each of these unique clients and save all of these invoices as PDFs to this folder here called PDF invoices on the Google Drive. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. I have a button here and if I run it, what it's going to do is loop through that client list on the second tab, feed formulas into this template and then save each of these invoices from the template to our folder. And there are our five invoices with the invoice number and the client name as the file name of the PDF. So before we begin writing our code, the first thing we need to do is link formulas on our invoice tab to our client data tab so that it pulls in the values. So this cell right here for the client name is the only one where we're not actually going to input a formula because our loop will handle this part. It's just going to run through our list of unique clients and paste each client name as it goes through the loop. So what I'm going to do here for now is just copy and paste any client name in here. So for our invoice number, we want to do a VLOOKUP based on our client name. So that is just going to be a VLOOKUP to the second column. We want an exact match. The date is just going to be the output of the today function, which returns today's date. And down here for the detail of the line items, some of our clients have more than one single line item and we want to pull back everything. So we're going to use the filter function. So the range we want to filter is going to be columns C through F and then our criteria column is going to be column B. And we want anything in column B that is equal to our invoice number in this cell here. And we might need to expand this a little bit so that it pulls back everything that's visible. The only other thing we need to do is create a list of unique client names for our loop because here we have multiples. We want to get unique values for client name and invoice number because those two items are going to be part of our file names and we only want to generate a loop on them one time. So what I'm going to use is the unique function and we want columns A and B. We don't want to pull in the headers, so we're going to start in cell A2. And that gets us everything we need. So now we are ready to begin writing our code. So I'm going to go up to extensions, app script. Now to save time, I've already created the code. So to make this video shorter, I'm just going to quickly run through it. So we called this function, gave it a name of save as PDF to folder. 
we have a variable called SS, which represents the spreadsheet we're in now. That's just equal to the spreadsheet application and get the active spreadsheet we're in now. We have a variable called sheet invoice that holds the invoice sheet. We have a variable called sheet client data that holds the second sheet containing all of our client data. We have a variable called last row that is equal to our client sheet data variable, get range, row two, column eight. So that gets this cell here, because that's column H. What we want to do is get the row number of the last row that contains values in column H. So we reference that starting point and then get next data cell, because this allows us to do the equivalent really of control down arrow from this point here so it's just like hitting that right there so that is just get next data cell spreadsheet app direction down and then we get the row number to get that row which is row six so we have a array variable called clients here that is also equal to our client sheet data variable we get range, a two-dimensional range here this time. So we have a starting point of row two, starting column of row eight. So that's, again, H2. The number of rows we want to go down is equal to our last row variable minus one. Because keep in mind, right now, currently, our last row variable is row six but we don't want to go down six cells we want to go down five so that's why we subtract one there the number of columns we want to get is two because we want to get this entire array here because we're going to extract elements from this array during our loop and the client name and the invoice number are what we're going to use and extract for the pdf file names so we get values and store those values in this array variable called clients. So then we have our for loop. A for loop repeats the same step over and over again based on a beginning and ending point that you specify. The ending point is basically when we want it to shut off. So our beginning point of the for loop is going to be a variable called i, which is our counter variable. It begins at a count of zero. The reason it begins at zero is because when you were, well, let me back up. We're looping through this clients array variable. And in AppScript, when you're looping through array variables, the count of rows and columns starts at zero rather than one. So that is why that is a value of zero. We then have the end point or how long we want our loop to run for. We want it to run so long as our counter variable is less than the length of our client's array variable. What does that mean? That means the length of the outer array, which is the collection of rows. The length of that is five. We have five rows, but keep in mind the count starts at zero. So this will run through that last element which is row four because the count starts at zero and the length of this is five so then we have how much we want our counter to increment in we just make a reference to our counter variable and it's plus plus that means count in increments of one so now inside this bracket here from here to here is the action we want to perform while this loop is running so we make a reference to our invoice sheet get range b6 we want to set the value to something so range b6 is where we paste in our client name via our loop because all of these values formulas here are dependent on the value in this cell <clears throat> So we want to set that value in B6 to our client's array, and then we have a set of brackets here. The first one is for the row reference, which is our counter variable, which begins at row zero, so the first row. 
and then the second set of brackets is our column reference which is column zero that means the first column so that is a reference to in the first iteration of this loop Wilson Inc cell H2 well it's not that cell it's actually an array stored in script so it's our clients array but that's the value it will pull in so that feeds into cell B6 and then updates the formulas on that sheet the invoice sheet we then have a variable called file name, which is equal to the word invoice. We then use the plus symbol to join it to our array variable again. This time we're on the same row, row I, our counter, and then column one to get the invoice number because this is column zero, this is column one. That's our second column with the invoice number. We then use a plus symbol to join it to the word for, and then another plus symbol to join it to the same thing we did up here, which pulls in the client name. We then have a reference to our second sheet, the client data sheet, to hide that sheet. And the reason we need to hide it is because when we convert this spreadsheet to a PDF, it will, by default, pull in all of the sheets tabs into that PDF. We only want this first invoice tab to go to the PDF. So that is why we need to hide that second sheet. We then have a variable called folder that is equal to our drive application and then get folders by name. The name of our folder is PDF invoices. That's where we want our files to be and then the method next. We then have a variable called blob. This is the variable where we will convert our sheet to a PDF. So that is a reference, begins with a reference to our invoice sheet, get the parent method, because like I said earlier, when you convert a sheet spreadsheet to a PDF, it does it on the parent level. So that's the entire sh spreadsheet. And then we use the method get blob to convert it to a different file type. And within that get blob method, there is the get has, and this is where we define the file type we want to convert it to application backslash PDF in single quotes. So then our last action is to reference our folder variable create file and what do we want to create our blob variable and we want to set the name what do we want to set it to our file name variable from up here so that creates the PDF file in that folder as the file name per our variable here so this ending bracket ends the action we want to perform during this loop so now once we're done with the loop the last thing we want to do is reference our client data sheet and show it, make it visible again. So I'm going to hit save. What we should see, well, I'm going to clear all this out. I had some PDFs in there already. So our destination folder is currently empty. So now when I run this, we'll first have to authorize it so I'll click review permissions click on the Google account we're using go to advanced click on the project name right now that's untitled it's down here at the bottom click allow in the bottom right so that will run what we should see once this is done running is all of our invoice PDFs created in that folder Once I hit refresh again, you can see they're all there with the invoice number and the client name as the file name. So now what we'd like to do in this last little bit is add a script button so we can run this directly out of our sheet. So I'm going to go up to insert drawing going to draw in a rectangle here we'll just call this save to PDF I'll 
copy the name of our function here. We'll click this little drop down, assign script, and paste in the name of our function. Click OK. I'm going to delete everything in this folder again. When I run this, the first thing we'll see is the sheet we're on now disappear because it gets hidden during our code. So I'm going to run. You can see this is changing our client names on our invoice tab as the loop runs. Now it's done. Our client data sheet reappears. If I go here, click refresh in our folder, we have all of our invoices. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.